now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. The man in the shadow. You notice the shadow? There you you, oh, oh there. don't touch your it's camera. Hello. There, he's wa- wandering around his apartment. There's his refrigerator. you got a nice kitchen there. I like it. Yeah, and, and that's your dining room there, and... How, how many yeah. who, how many rooms you got? I got uh, this this living room, little yeah. bedroom area. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let's go yeah. into your let's go into your bedroom a second. Okay. I, <laughs> I want to see how messy your bedroom is because this is a bachelor. Okay. There's no yeah. woman around saying, "Did you make the bed today?" Every day I have to make the bed or I'm in trouble. Okay. Bath. A bathroom. Okay. Let's see. Let's see the bed. Let's see the bed. Bathroom's very clean. Ooh. Ooh, the bathroom is clean. Uh, uh, the bed is the bed made. Uh, well, it's made enough. Oh, oh, I see. The, okay, all right. Well, you know, my wife kind of forces me to make the bed. Well, there, well, well, yeah. There's another cat. I don't have that problem. My wife is in California. <laughs> Your wife is in California. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's never come back though, has she? Oh, yeah, I know. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, but, I mean, how do you deal with that? I mean, you're... I, I, uh, I go on the good mess with a chorus girl. I don't know. I just, uh, I'm just very content here. Yeah. Me and the three babies. We, this is the second time we've had to record this because Uncle Al fucked up in recording it. Yeah. I didn't I didn't set it up so that it would record the picture. Well, the last time we're doing it today, so you better get it right. Yeah, I got it going right now. What we were talking about earlier, before yeah, exactly. before I realized I had fucked this whole thing up, is we were talking about um, uh, uh, pot being legal in Nevada, mm-hmm. and they just yep. made it legal here. Okay, uh-huh. now the governor signed it into law. I think either last Wednesday or last Thursday, and I figured Friday the first store would open, mm-hmm. but then I was informed to dissuade, dissu- abused of my of my feeling about it because they told me, eh, it's going to be two years before they finally get nah. this thing hashed out. <laughs> they made it legal, which means I could probably walk down the street now smoking pot and no cop's going to stop me. Yeah. Okay. But, but, uh, there'd be no store. I thought a store would suddenly open up on, if they signed it Thursday, Friday, the first store would open up. Oh, no, you've been taking for a long ride, no, my friend. No, no, no they've got to you send, it, send it to a committee. To, love New York. Ah. Send it to a committee to see how it's going to be legalized. Exactly. And I'm yeah, going, I don't want to miss schools. That's an insomnia. That's what they're going to do. So like the Godfather. Yeah, but I mean, isn't that isn't that ridiculous? I mean, what they should do is if they say, well, we're going to make it legal. Okay, let's all take a vote. They should already have in that thing a boilerplate of how it all works. You know, you got to uh-huh. you got to be licensed to sell it, and you got to you know pay a tax, so much of a tax on it. Don't touch that phone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. See, what he does, he's doing the show on the phone, and then somebody calls him, and then he's got to reject the call. Don't touch it. Just let yeah. it let it go. Okay? You're talking to Uncle Al now. You know, and it's slowly oh. drifting to his crotch. I don't want to see that. I do <laughs> not want to see that. Oh, there we go. Anyway, so... Um, um, so you 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 go down to these pot stores. How expensive? Yes, how ex- okay. How expensive is it? Let's say I want to buy what 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 kind of? Uh, you can get a quarter ounce of shake for forty dollars, and it's usually really good. And you can get an eighth of an ounce for about the same thing. Uh, buds and flour, you know. So a whole stuff. so a whole um, uh, uh, a whole ounce would cost you about one hundred and sixty bucks, right? And then 10, 20, 30, yep, something like that. Okay, 
That's cheaper, isn't it? Than Maybe it used to. How much it's did you? Uh, I have no problem with it. <laughs> no, I but no I mean, when it was illegal, how much did you pay for an ounce? Uh, it depends when it was. In high school, it was twenty five dollars, but you know, later on, I, don't, I never bought an ounce. I, couldn't I an remember ounce. an ounce going for like two hundred and fifty bucks, something like oh, that. Oh yeah, sure. No, yeah. they probably have, you have good ones for that much. You know, I haven't checked out the ounces. I get quarters and I get eights. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, and but they're different prices for different types. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's the? Do you know which one's most expensive? Uh, it's a there's a different brand every time you go in there. Yeah. This one's called Train Rig. This one's called Fender Bender. This one's called Brain Damage. This one's called Retard. Full on Retard. This, you know, the, 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 I just I just go in. I say, what's good? What has a high THC count? I like a hybrid, an indica and a sativa. Just a little mixer, and just you know, off to the okay. races. That's all. So you simple. buy it. I, I'm, let's talk about you and your hat. It's simple. I've been doing it for fifty years. I know you've been, of course, because you it makes you feel like a jazz musician. Bebop, baby. Don't you dig what's going to Squaresville? Like, miles, man. My, fa my father worked in a, in, you know, he's a musician. And he would work in various bands and so on in San Francisco. And uh, I said, Dad, have you ever smoked pot? And I think he said he did. He tried it. Mm -hmm. Because he said, we have musicians who are smoking it all the time. Yeah, sure. You know. And he said, they used to think that it would make them play better. <laughs> he said, but I never heard one that played better because he was on pot. Yeah. He said, in fact, they some of them played worse. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, but they believed they were playing better. Thought they did. Yeah. Devil weed, damn it. But uh, uh, he, uh, I, well, who, who told me the story? Somebody told me the story. Was it Kravitz? No. I'm, I'm trying to remember who told me this story where he decided that he was going to go home and turn, this was when pot was the big thing, and it just, everybody was doing pot illicitly, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, he went home to his father, and he was home for the weekend, and he said, uh, Dad, I smoke pot. And he said, oh, okay. He said, would you like to try some? And his father said, okay, I'm game. So he uh, lights up the joint, and he tells him, here, you know, you inhale it, and you hold it. And he says, yeah, I've heard that. So right. he goes, uh, he hands it over to his father, here, right? And he, <laughs> and then he hands it over to his father. His father takes a puff out of it, and they're both sitting there, and they're both kind of buzzing off the high, okay? Uh -huh. And finally the kid says to his father, well, Dad, what do you think? And his father said, hasn't changed since I was a kid. <laughs> so I you know, for all of you, grass. for all of you who think your parents never tried pot, forget it. Well, I mean, of course, kids today. If you're oh, a yeah, kid once, today, your parents probably were high all the time. They're probably high right now. My yeah. father wanted to try pot when he was younger. He was busy fighting the Nazis, so it's a simpler time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, well, your pot was. You know, pot was made illegal by Harry J. Anslinger. Harry Anslinger, that bastard, 1937. And yeah. by the way, if you if you go and you see a uh, the thing about Billy Holiday versus the United States, which is on, I can't remember, I think it's on HBO, but I'm not yeah. certain. The main bad guy in that is Harry J. Anslinger. He's yeah, the one that went it. after Billy Holiday. What an asshole. What an asshole. Absolute asshole. asshole. This was a guy who, who created who created his own place in the government. That's he was right. the ultimate bureaucrat. He invented his mm -hmm. job. And he made people believe that marijuana was this terrible, horrible drug. Uh -huh. And uh, he was the one that, for instance, I think paid for reefer madness. Mm -hmm. So that they would go out. So what happened is if you look at pot 1933 was totally legal. You, people smoked it and everything. Yeah. If you started looking at newspapers, all of a sudden there were phony stories about people jumping out of buildings high on marijuana and things like uh, that. All these negative stories. And these were the stories planted by Harry J. Anslinger. Yeah. And then by 1935, well, we've got to take care of this devil weed. Let's make it illegal. And they made it illegal. And because he was already in line for it, they gave him the job of, of pot czar. Marijuana's yep. 
and, yep. and drug czar. And uh, he remained so till the early 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, and he gave himself a job. And supposedly, on his deathbed, somebody asked him, did you really believe that marijuana was bad for people? And he said, nah, just gave me a job. What an asshole. Oh, yeah, what God. an asshole. All the people, you know, in those days, folks, you went to jail for pot. Oh, you could sure, go to jail for pot for what, 20 years? Sure. And when we look at it now, I mean, everybody's making it legal, and we realize that it's really a rather, it's a benign drug. Nobody commits uh, crime sure. on marijuana. Nobody can, you're not aggressive enough to commit a crime. Vitamin M. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so finally, we're, we're legalizing it. But, geez, it took a long time. I always like to tell the story about the time. You know the writer P.J. O'Rourke? You know? Exactly. Uh, 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 P.J. and I knew each other in New York. He worked for the National Lampoon, and he was at my place one day. We're sitting on the floor, as most people did in those days, uh, beanbag chairs, you know? Yeah. And, and we're passing a joint back and forth. And he's getting high. I'm getting high. And he looks at me, and he says, you know, someday... This is going to be illegal. Yeah. And I, I said, yeah, I, I hope it's sooner than later. Well, it turned yeah. out it was later because I was in my 40s when we had that little discussion, and now I'm in my Long 80s, okay? <laughs> and I feel kind of robbed, you know? And I feel sorry. Yeah, I feel I sorry. Lot, if, so I don't care. If he was alive today, I'd feel sorry for Robert Mitchum, who went to jail for marijuana. You remember yeah, that? Sorry. Sure. But because he was a movie star, they only gave him like three months or something. Hey, Cooper, like hey, Cooper got a refund. Then you know what? It, did, it didn't ruin Mitchum's career. Nah, no. Nope. I, I could never figure out why. It would ruin anybody else's, right? You liked him. Wasn't Gene Krupa the drummer? Uh, yeah, it's with him too, so yeah. Yeah, so all these people got arrested for, for pot. Yeah. And God, I mean, we should give them money for the time they spent in jail. That's right. Because they're they're for all the pot is. <laughs> now it's legal. And what happens to all those people who are in jail now for pot? Because there got to be some people in jail that, somewhere for pot. Like I got caught with a seed in 1970 or something. Yeah. Uh, what happens to those people? Do they let them out now? Good question. Good question. You know? So, I mean, because I think there got to be some people still in jails on marijuana charges. Mm -hmm. You know? Sure. So it, it it sucked, you know what what yeah. we did. For and, our hotline is open. Loberman Ford. Hey, listen, listen. If I had my way, all drugs would be legal. Yeah. And, you know, make story. it a, if it's if it's a problem, make it a medical problem, not a legal problem. There you go. You know, I mean, no, heroin is not good for you, folks. It's, it, don't try heroin, but it's not as bad as they say it is. Yeah. You know. I mean, you don't get hooked on the first shot, okay? Yeah. That's a lie. I'll you say that right now. But don't take that as, as, as a reason to go out and try it because it can take six weeks of constant use for you to become addicted. Yeah. But once you're addicted, what a lousy, lousy <laughs> habit. I mean, you've, yeah. known, you've known heroin addicts. It's, 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 sure. it's pitiful. It's all Just it's pitiful. Scary. But nevertheless, it should be legal. And it should be dispensed legally yeah. to people who have. Legal park they can all hang out at, you know. Yeah, yeah. Area. But you know, I, 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 all drugs should be legalized, and then we should deal with them individually, whether they're a medical problem or they're, a, you know. But don't make them a legal problem because you're taking perfectly decent people and turning them into criminals. I That's thank you very it's... much, ladies and gentlemen. That's my stand, and I stick very much. with it. And right here is our poster child for pot smoking. Won't you help little Stephen here to be able to... Send me, more, send me <laughs> some samples. Send me some samples. Uh, 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 Loberman 7, 326. Operators are standing by. Ask for Miss Buxham. Let me just ask you this quickly. You, you, uh, you get yourself a quarter of an ounce, right? Yeah. That's what you buy every time, right? You don't wanna... Yeah, here they are. Do they give you a break in price if you buy a whole ounce? Uh, probably not. I don't know. Yeah, but anyway... You do a you buy, pennies. you buy a quarter of an ounce. How long does that last you? It could last you for a week or two or ten days or you know an hour or whatever. An hour. <laughs> That's how good the music is, man. What is a quarter ounce? About a bud, couple of buds. 
a quarter ounce. It's a bag like, you know, like this, uh, uh, like this. Yeah. A square bag like that. Yeah. And, uh, and you just, then you fill it and you smoke it and you have fun and you exhale okay. and inhale and you go, oh boy, look at me. They say they sell shake? Shake, yes. Now that's got to be really cheap, right? Oh, but it's still pot. It's good. But is it cheap? Yeah. It's the cheapest. Cheaper. Huh? Cheap, cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheaper, yeah. Yeah, because shake's fine, you know. I, have nothing, I got no problem with shake, believe you me. It's still pot, and they call it shake. I have a Sherman tank down Broadway on it, but... Uh, Isn't it no, amazing? Uh, they uh, call it shake, and that's a term that I heard 40 years ago. Shake. Give me some yeah, shake. shake. Yeah, some shake. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. How about that? Yeah, yeah, and uh, we'll talk to Stephen Pearl again next time. Thank you so much, Stephen. I really appreciate Thanks, it. See, even how I remember to show up. Bye bye. <laughs> and and, and sm smoke some for me. Bye. Now, in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey there, everybody. How are you? Let me just, let me just put my earphones on, give you a little more volume here so you can hear me. Yeah, here I am with my glasses on. I'll take them off. I don't, I don't need them all the time. It's weird. It's really weird. Anyway, how are you? Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Watch. See, now I look. How do I look? I look okay? All right. But now, hey, I'm beautiful. Okay? I'm beautiful. What is, what is the problem up there? I've got some. Let me do that. There we go. That solves a problem. Okay. It's a fake background. What can I say? It's just a fake background. Uh, let me see here. A um, couple of things. I went to the. I went. To, you know, I went to the doctor today to get uh, to. I have some some gazorchness up here. I have some, like it gets red, right? And so I wondered what that was. Okay, and I just so I went to a, a, a Marjorie says. Go to the uh, dermatologist. Plus, you should have your entire body looked over to see if you have anything wrong with you. All right. So I go to the dermatologist, and um, he looks at this. Now, I'm, I'm worried about this for weeks because it, it's not attractive, and I do a little TV thing here every night. And I, I'm, I look bad enough as it is already. I don't want to enhance my, uh, my, uh, my uh, ugliness, okay? So anyway, so I go, um, uh, so I go to him, and he he looks at it, and he goes, "Oh, oh, that, it, it, it's dandruff on your forehead." What? He says, "Yeah, it's dandruff on your forehead. That's what it is. It's like dandruff." He said, uh, "Here, I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll subscribe to you a, 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 um, um, a thing uh, for uh, taking care of it." Uh, and uh, you can get it at the front desk, okay? So, uh, uh, and then he, then he does a whole body thing. I get naked, and he's looking all over my body, and, of course, Marjorie goes, you never know what's on your body. You might have cancer and skin and everything. He says, eh, your body's perfect. I haven't got anything there. Well, I mean, it's not perfect. It's pretty ugly at this point, but, you know, it, it's, it's perfect enough so far as the doctor's concerned. And he sends me on my merry way. Now, I go out to the front desk, and I sign out, and she says, oh, here's the, uh, here's the stuff he wanted you to use, okay? So he gives me a jar of this stuff, and it, uh, she says, that's $33. And I go, is this, can I put this on my Medicare or whatever? They, oh, no, no, this, this is not Medicare stuff. This is just, you know. So I said, $33? Okay, here's my credit card, $33. Now, I'm driving, and I'm looking at it, and it says, Hydrocortisone one percent with aloe, and I'm thinking, wait till I get home. But I think I've been solving this problem already. And I get home, and I find that I've been putting this stuff on my forehead. It's been helping it go away. And I look at it, and it says hydrocortisone one percent with aloe, and this tube cost me like eight bucks. Okay, but he charged me $33 for a beautiful-looking jar. It's really a cool-looking jar. It looks like I'm getting something special. But no, he's just pat. He probably is taking the stuff, buying it at uh, CBS, squirting it into one of these beautiful jars, and uh, charging me 33 bucks for it. So, anyway. 
that was my story on that. Now, the other thing that happened today, and, and so I feel, I still feel a little ripped off. You know, I, I don't care. The guy's a nice guy. Uh, I know we're living in a pandemic, and he's got enough problems keeping his doors open. He's a Park Avenue doctor. Okay, that's very fancy. Say you got a Park Avenue doctor, and you're going to the Park Avenue doctor. Uh, but to get down there, I still take like Lyft. Now I, I take Lyft because um, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, get on a bus. I don't want to get on a train to get there, uh, and. Uh, Somehow I've been using Lyft all along, and they haven't been that expensive. They've been rather reasonable. To go to my dentist, it's usually cost me about $30. And uh, th this place is nearer to me, where I was going today, than that. And I look, I finally, like five minutes beforehand, I go to get my Lyft, and it says $42. Well, I mean, I got I got to get there, so I'm t I tell them, give me forty two dollars, get them here, let me go. So uh, I uh, I go downstairs and I wait for the car, and as I'm driving there, I figure, you know, I've never never used Uber. Let me just look at Uber, okay? Now I always thought Uber was the big ripoff. I mean, I always hear terrible things about 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 Uber. All right, I look at this ride I'm taking, which is costing me in Lyft $42, plus I'm going to have to give a tip, came to 51 after I was through. One trip to the doctor, okay, it's one way. But I look at Uber, and I could have gotten it for $22. Now, isn't that a little disparity, $20 disparity between one and the other? And I was always told that, you know, uh, Uber was the ripoff company. So, what do I know? Okay. So, those are the two things that happened to me today that uh, oh, I have to put this back on. Uh, the, uh, today, that, uh, that got me uh, really in a, in a lather. But I don't care. It's only money. And how long am I going to live? Do I need all the money I have saved? You know, I would like to know when I die, and who knows when that's going to be. It could be tomorrow, okay? It could be tomorrow. Uh, I'll miss you all, okay? Uh, it could be tomorrow. It could be 10 years from now, but I don't know, okay? So I would like to be able to spend my last penny the day before I die and not leave any on the table. Uh, I would also like, wouldn't you like to know when you were going to die? I mean, I know that that sounds like a horrible thing. No, I don't want to know when I'm going to die, you know, whatever. But if you knew when you were going to die, you'd know how much of your money to spend right now, okay? Instead, you're saving it because if you live to be 100, oh, you're in trouble, okay, if you start spending it now. Uh, and the other thing is that if you knew you were dying, that when you were going to die, you go out and max out all your all your credit cards, and then goodbye. See you later. Oh, by the way, credit card companies, I came out ahead. You know, so uh, just a uh, little little theories of mine, screwed up as they might be. Anyway, uh, let me uh, let me see here. Uh, we got to go to our uh, we got to go to our our Zoom panel, and we do that by simply. Uh, admitting everybody to the uh, show, as you can see, they all start popping up like crazy here. And uh, we got, uh, we're starting off with Jeff and Brian Neary and Charlie Wallace and uh, Trucker Steve. And uh, we should, uh, and, and Jeff Stein. Okay. We got everybody. Okay. Jeff, and your mic isn't on. I just want you to know that just so you I know. know that. Oh, you see. Okay. I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just so you don't, you aren't surprised later on. All right. Thank you. Yeah. We save money for our kids. Well, yeah, but you know, I, I don't have any kids. Uncle Alex. Huh? Well, and let's Uncle say. Let, let, <laughs> <laughs> We're your kids. Friend of wealth. Let's. Well, if Marjorie, if, if, if you both go, then you can spread the wealth to us. Uh, so I, 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 we could, I, yeah, because I don't have anybody. See, let's say, let's say Marjorie goes first. We both look at each other every morning and go like, um, which one's going first here? Okay, which one's going first? 
But if she goes first, I get her apartment that she owns, okay? Which I could unload for maybe 400 grand, 450 grand. Depends on the market at any given moment, all right? But then I've got the money, but then I'm next on the, on the agenda to go. Mm -hmm. And now who do I leave that to? I mean, I don't have anybody to leave it to, okay. all right? I mean, I don't have any kids, right? Um, that's why I could max out my credit cards and nobody would have to pay for them, right? <laughs> I say if you pass away, that night, whoever's on the call waiting for you, we get to split it. Yeah. We deserve it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Jeff, Charlie, and I for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what that, you know what that, if I announced that that's what I was going to do, do you know what that would do for this show? Oh, oh, that's yeah. oh it would get us maybe yeah. two more callers. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody else would hear it, you know, so what, uh, you know. Yeah, remember all the response you got when you posted that you had the cancer, the touch of the cancer? Yeah. That's what you got to say. This is your 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 last year because your cancer run. The worst you... thing I ever did was telling people that I had cancer. I remember, and, and I'll tell you why. You know why? Yeah. You suddenly get all these things. Oh, Alex, we we're praying for you. What do you mean? Sure. I got prostate cancer. They're gonna put some. They're gonna <laughs> put some seeds in me. They're gonna radiate me, and the, the chances it's gonna go away completely. And you know, if it does come back, it's not gonna be for another ten years. Okay. And by then, I may be gone anyway. Um, the other thing is, I got to go get a PSA test, which I haven't had in one lately, just to make sure everything's fine. But uh, my my urologist said, "Go get it." He says, "You're you're going to be fine." He said, "You have no perceptible PSA, and that means that uh, the chances of it coming back are very low." Okay, so but anyway, uh, but when I put that up, that I had prostate cancer. I got all this, oh, we're praying for you, you know, uh, we're praying for you, and, and, and we're hoping and praying that you're going to be okay, Alex. And I'm going, hey, it's no big deal. I'm just telling you so you know, right? I let people know about what's happening in my life. That's always been the way I've done stuff. But, you know, what happens with a lot of other people, they put it out there, and they make it into a big deal. Oh, did you hear? Oh, so and so has cancer, and then they make a big deal. But we're going to try and suss it through, you know, and 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 you're going, you know, it's not that bad. So uh, I I, uh, uh, what, what was it? Uh, did Howard Stern say he had something at one point that they thought might be cancer, but it turned out not to be? And everybody was going crazy, and I'm going, what you've got is nothing, you know. I mean, there are a lot of cancers, you know, that you can get that aren't going to kill you. Okay? There are some that will and you don't pay attention to them. Like a melanoma from sun cancer, that could kill you. Really worse than my prostate cancer. Yeah. But uh, people go, oh, yeah, I got cancer. I got cancer. Oh, I had a cancer scare. I had a, pro you know, a... a let me tell you who had exactly what I had, and it was solved in exactly the same way by exactly the same doctor. And I've, you all know, know this story. My prostate cancer, right, they put the first aid of radiation, they put seeds in there. And my doctor was the doctor who put the seeds in Rudy Giuliani 20 years ago, and his cancer has yet to come back. He saved Rudy Giuliani's life, which was a good reason for me not to go to him. Okay. But, uh, and I never once, you know, I never once, I knew this about him, but I never once ever let on or brought up Rudy Giuliani uh, because I, he probably hears it all the time. You know, like, oh, you saved his life? Well, to hell with you, you know. <laughs> and we know you're a doctor, but that Hippocratic Oath you could have kind of skipped on for him, you know. So, um, but, uh, you know, he, if he saved his life 20 years ago, it was Rudy Giuliani was younger and prostate cancer is more deadly than when you're 80. So, but I had the same guy. And, uh, was, that, was that procedure well known back then, 20 years ago? Oh, too, yeah, technology? yeah. Well, this guy is the guy who, he didn't invent it, but he modified it and, and uh, made it more successful. 
Um, and uh, it created a, a methodology that uh, to this day is being used by people, although they don't, they don't do this procedure a lot. And the reason is they say, well, it's just old-fashioned procedure. It's an old thing, right? But that's not the reason why. It's that there are very few doctors in this country who truly know how to do it. And that's the problem, see? That's the problem. They, they don't know how to do it. And we've been joined by Scott, by the way, as second night in a row. I guess you get part of my inheritance. Uh, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Good to see you. How you doing? Hi, Alex. What's new? What's new? Yeah. Uh, not much. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, turn up your volume a little bit. Uh, I'm working on my volume here. Hang on. Okay. Well, anyway. He'll do it. I went to my urologist just the other day. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. And what did he say? You're fine. Yeah. Enjoy your life. Did he give you a PSA <laughs> test? Yeah. Yeah. Have you gotten the results yet? Yeah, everything's good. No, you already got the PSA test back? No, not from that because I didn't need it. Wait, no, you should need a PSA test. Every year I get one. Every year? I think yeah. they did it already. They probably did. They, did they draw blood on you? No. No. Well, then they didn't give you a PSA test, so how does he know everything's perfect? I guess I got to trust them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what they do at our age. You know what they think at our age, don't you? Uh, well, if he gets it, uh, it's gonna, he's going to die of something else before it kills him. That's their attitude. Yeah, you know, I don't hard. like that attitude, especially since I plan to live forever. Yeah. So I was thinking of dropping this show and starting a new show called The Old Show. <laughs> and just talk about stuff that affects old people. You know, nobody will want to put advertising on it because they don't figure anybody who's listening to the program will live long enough, Right. You know, but it'd be a show you'd like it, Jeff. Yeah, but what about Brian? Is it you're gonna have to kick him off because he's well, too young? <laughs> Brian, uh, we're gonna have an I'm age limit old. here. You got to be at least seventy-five. <laughs> oh, bye then. I I want to see how few people. I want to I want to do a show where I want to see how few people I'm gonna get to call. Okay. You know. <laughs> Get all the drug companies to sponsor you. Yeah, we need we need a, more sorry. volume, more volume on you, Kevin. Yeah, the wrong way, Kevin. Kevin, more volume. Yeah. More volume. Yeah, more. <clears throat> okay. So okay. I just had blood work done again, the, and and I must they must have given me a PSA. I know they gave me a long list of stuff to to look at, so I just looked at all of it. Cholesterol, everything was down, and in those things but what what's psa what does that stand for psa is uh, prostate specific <clears throat> antigen oh okay yeah I'll that just... doesn't explain anything does it, it no but i'm saying it'll, it'll explain yeah. what it is if it yeah. okay we'll let kevin explain it to you kevin <laughs> what's that yeah, uh, were you going to explain it to him no, I was just testing my microphone uh, oh, check, check. <laughs> <laughs> Testing, one, two, three. Hello. Can you Jeff. hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Any, Carry on. Anyway, so, uh, uh, and it, it's a test that, that when you have prostate cancer, you have a rise in what's called your PSA. The number rises. And uh, they, they, they don't know whether it's actually a pos uh, an absolute indicator, but if it goes up precipitously, it's a good idea to look further into it, okay? And and so if you get to have a PSA of under four, you're fine. But if you have it over four, they start looking at it. If it keeps rising, then they go and give you, you know, they they do a lot of things sticking stuff up your butt, you know. The more it rises, the less you rise. Yes, yes. But it doesn't mean mine rose, and then it went down, but I still wound up having... They found cancer when they did a, a, a biopsy. And uh, so they decided to put me through all this stuff. So I did the radiation, which was easy, and I did the seeds, which, you know, I mean, it didn't, wasn't a big problem. It took me maybe six months to completely get over it, you know, to where I wasn't having 
peeing problems and things like that. But it wasn't, it was no big deal. You were here while I was going through it, you know. Yeah. And I think I was only out one day from the show. I was right back the next day and sitting down, which is, you know. Um, so, you know, and I won't tell you how they do it, how they do the seeds, but it's, uh, they have to take a big needle and go inside somewhere and start it's horrible. putting, huh? That sounds horrible. Well, it sounds horrible, but it isn't. Uh, the, the problem it's was it's they give you, to begin out. with, they're going to put you out. Okay. They put you out. In my case, though, they couldn't put me out. I'm, I'm getting ready to get put out because I like getting put out because that drug they give you, that propofol, is terrific. It's only about a second of getting high, but it's a great feeling. It's boom, oh, wonderful. And then the guy says it's over. You know, uh, but um, uh, he, they couldn't do that to me, he said, because I'm 80 years of age and they didn't want to take the chance. Okay. Uh, that they, they don't want to put me under, but they will give me a spinal. And I'm going, oh, that's not going to be pleasant. Uh, and uh, they said, and then we'll give you some, some like Valium or something like that intravenously and you won't, you won't feel a thing and know what's really what's going on. And um, they, they did that and uh, the spinal didn't hurt at all. And then... Uh, uh, they uh, they then put gave me this stuff in my arm the, the intravenous Valium or whatever, and I was so out of it that I you know I knew I knew everything that was going on around me but I didn't really give a shit you know and nothing hurt because they've killed me now from the from the waist down so for a while I became Patrick you know uh, I told Patrick I said now I know what it's like to be you you know. Uh, not be because you, after after it's through, you got to wait about three hours before this stuff wears off. You're in recovery and you're waiting for your legs to start working, and it's really that's the worst part about it, you know. Terrible. But otherwise, no problem, you know. What? That should be okay. Yeah. He hasn't called the show in a long time. No, but he posts on Facebook. In fact, yeah. he posted today that. Today is his cripple anniversary. It's his cripple versus. Cripple versus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I talk to him about once a week, and he's he's in fine shape. You know, he's great. But anyway, um, what we what we who has had his hand raised? Oh, I did because I was going to talk about Patrick's cripple versary. Yeah, yeah. Eighteen years. Wow. Eighteen years. Yeah. Wow. He handles it very well. I'm, I always yeah. l- like Patrick for that. Amazing. You know, um, he's terrific. And uh, Kevin knows him as well, well too. So, you know, he's uh, he's really a terrific guy. I really I like him and I admire him. How's that? How's that for a double head of Kevin? Yep. Uh, yep. Me too. Yep. Anyway, so uh, now uh, now I want to tell people Scott here. See where I got my arrow. Scott um, is not. Uh, it, it, your name, your your first name is Scott, and your last name you have K there is what? Oh, Kaprowski. Kaprowski. So that's why. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, when it has Scott there, a lot of people will look at him and say, "Is that Scott no. Boddicker?" <laughs> <laughs> he does look like Scott Boddicker, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Scott's got long hair. Yeah. I know, but that's the only difference. You know, he looks a lot facially a lot like Scott. Yeah. yeah. Some night Scott should call, and somehow I can put him side by side with uh, Scott K, <laughs> and we can we can do the comparison. Um, but anyway, Trucker Steve, here. Where are you tonight? At Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, were, that wasn't where you were yesterday, was it? No. Where was I yesterday? Um, Sydney, Nebraska. Sydney, de- Nebraska. Never heard of it. Yeah, a small little town. Okay. It's not the middle of nowhere, but you can see it from there, right? Uh, but the headquarters for um, uh, that one hunting um, Cabela's. Hmm. Uh, it's a hunting uh, outfitter store. Yeah. Cabela's. Yeah. There, that town is where their headquarters are. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not familiar with it, but that's because I'm not a hunter. Well, yeah. I've been to their store once, and I was, I didn't like it. Yeah, 
I know. Where, I know. So I've always seen a the lot guy of guy that owns it. Yeah. Had all these animals that he brought in from Africa that he shot. Oh, great! They were oh. stuffed, like <laughs> elephants, lions. Oh, it was boy. disgusting. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. That one. I don't know. I don't know why people do that. I was. I've been watching. I've been, I've been watching. Sydney, Nebraska. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I've been watching this documentary on uh, Hemingway. I finished yeah, it tonight. It, it's yeah. good, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I gotta say, I, I never liked Hemingway. I thought he was boring. <laughs> well, you know. I I never read Hemingway myself. I was never much of a reader <laughs> anyway. But I never read Hemingway, and this made me kind of want to read him. You know. Well, they, he everybody raves about him, but I, I read uh, what was uh, the Sun Also Rises and uh, the first one. Uh, a uh, farewell to arms. Well, no, that was that. That was not the first one. That was about the third or fourth one. Yeah, yeah. but the early ones. They're so boring. <clears throat> yeah. I never read the, uh, the, uh, the, for whom the bell, for whom the bell tolls. For whom the that. bell tolls. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, it's a very good documentary, though. I yeah, mean, yeah, I, yeah. I I never read a lot of him. Uh, uh, never really venerated him let's say but in watching this i began to realize why he was great okay and talk um, about me why huh why was he great because he i he changed the way in which writing was done he that's what i don't get he, well but you, you, that's because you weren't alive then you didn't know what crap people were writing in those days you know well i've read like the great gatsby that was a great well now he's got to realize fitzgerald was out of that whole crowd okay yeah. i mean he came before hemingway but he yeah. was in paris with hemingway and they yeah. were all coming up at the time and so fitzgerald i mean i like fitzgerald a lot um I, I think he wrote great American novels. I think The Great Gatsby is a great, a great novel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But what, what Hemingway did, he had a way with prose, I mean, with just dialogue uh, that was amazing, and, and the terseness of his sentences, and how he could get a whole idea encapsulated into a single paragraph. And he changed the way in which writing was written in this country. So, you know. Well, that's what they say, but I can't. I just can't see it. Yeah. I just, now, I was never a big fan of his either, but you know, I found this whole documentary fascinating because it yeah. really—it's about his life and about yeah. how he lived and his psychoses and his problems and and everything. And I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but he commits suicide at the end. So. <laughs> yeah. What's it on? What's it on? Uh, it's, on it's on PBS. PBS. Yeah. Oh, PBS. Okay. Yeah. One of those Ken Burns deals. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and another Ken Burns documentary yeah. that maybe is longer than it has to be. <laughs> you know. Um, he, well, he goes very... He's microscopic when he deals with the subject. You know? He, he doesn't just, just go through it, I mean, and do it... I mean, a lot of people have done documentaries on Hemingway and they're like 42 minutes. You know? But this one goes deeply, really, into his marriages and into his mind and what he was thinking at the time and what he was writing to people. And there were no, if you notice, there were no interviews with him except for one interview that NBC did. And then it was, he was reading off a teleprompter because he didn't feel confident doing interviews. So he never did interviews. And... Um, because I kept saying as it was going on, as somebody who likes interviewing people, boy, he'd be, he'd be great to interview. And then they showed the one interview that he did, and I went, boy, I'm glad I never lived long enough to interview him. You know, it would have driven me nuts. Anyway, how you doing tonight, Alan? I'm doing good. I uh, got off the phone with my mother five minutes late and then had trouble getting on again with the stupid what, Zoom I had to reboot the computer. So really? That's my oh, okay. excuse, and I'm sticking to well, it. Well, don't call Zoom stupid, otherwise it won't work for you. Oh, okay. You I'm know. sorry. Yeah. At uh, least I'm not having camera problems. Like, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, I uh, I went in today and I took my USB strip and I pulled out the plug, <clears throat> the electrical yeah. plug in it. Okay. Yes. And I plugged it back in 
and uh, then I turned off the computer and started it up, and it started right up. So apparently, How about that? Alan might have been right. Well, I, it had something to do with the strip. Now I may have to get new strips eventually here. But uh, Alan said that last night. I know <laughs> Alan said that last night. So thank you for thank helping you. me, and, and you're never going to let me forget it, are you? Oh no, no it, I'm done with it. I'm uh, done. It was a great right. concept that you came up with. Thank you, Alan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's a reality. It, no, it was so, one of the. Know, I'm pretty. I'm pretty technical. When you said it, when you said it, out. I thought it's one of the possibilities. But it's something coming from. It's not coming from the computer, and it's not. You know, it's coming definitely from the USB inputs. Right. Uh, but, hmm. I, I, I'm glad you got a. Looks like you got it resolved. Maybe. We don't know yet. We'll have to wait till this thing screws up again. But you know. I don't care much, you know. I'm I'm getting to the point where I say, fuck it. If if tomorrow somehow this machine breaks down on me tomorrow, if I have time by showtime I'll fix it. Otherwise, fuck it. Yeah. And you let us know though, because if you if we think you die, we're gonna be on the line like <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well right? no no, what you're gonna hope is that you won the money. That's what I'm saying. We're going to be excited. And then the next time you, you show up online, and we're like, what the heck? You know, very few of these guys know about this lady who used to uh, work uh, on uh, right next to Alex. And she didn't come to work one day, remember? The my Liz? Yeah. <laughs> what was this? Who? The lady who died. Oh, oh, you mean Lynn Samuels. Lynn Samuels. Oh, well, I know. Oh, yeah. yeah I kind of I hated her. You know, yeah, I, just, I hated people, her. People that die in between. I you don't know, care. She, A it, shift and B shift usually don't come back. With she was a cunt when she was alive, and she's a cunt when <laughs> she's dead. Okay? She hated on, me. Uh, she hated Air me. America? What? Was that on, was she on Air America? No, no it was like no. Sirius was XM. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was on the. She had the two o'clock or the one o'clock uh, show. Something like that. Yeah. I think oh, she yeah. was on Air America too, though, wasn't she? No. Before never. that? No? Never. No. Never. Oh, okay. Never. Uh, but I mean, it was it was amazing. Uh, she just this was a woman who just decided to hate me. I don't know why. I never said anything bad to her. I was always very, I was always very, um, um, what do you call it, uh, deferential to her, because she had been in New York a long time and she'd built up a respect among certain people, thought she was the ultimate liberal and things like that. Okay, so I went. That's uh, you know I, I I should treat her nicely and I always treated her nicely, but, but what was that? Uh, yeah. My phone going off. Sorry. Oh, oh, I see. What was the music? <laughs> uh, it was some high school thing. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I, I just, you know, I, uh, uh, I always was very nice to her, and uh, uh, she was always very mean to me. And in spite of that, I was always very nice to her. And. Uh, uh, you know, to show you what a kind of a person she was, she finally, she died. And they said, Alex, would you do a memorial for her on your show? <laughs> and not wanting to be the bad guy, I said, okay, we'll do a memorial on my show to Lynn Samuels. So they said, oh, listen, look who we got. We got her sister to talk with you. And I said, oh, that's good. That's very nice. And I, so I have her on, and I say, hello, you know, and I don't know what her name was. I don't remember what her name was. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, listen, we're doing, we're happy to have you here. It's a memorial for Lynn. Um, how do you feel about it? And, and uh, express your feelings at this moment of your loss. She says, no loss at all. She was a terrible person. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you remember that, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, you I heard it. And, I, and we all went, we all kind of, paused, uh, stunned in a way, but also very pleased that somebody had spoke the very real truth on this memorial to Lynn Samuels. But no, she was terrible. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, very nice having you here. 
I mean, after she said that, I had no more to ask her, you know. What are your remembrances of her as you grew up? Well, she always was a cunt back then. And she, you know. So that was that was Lynn Samuels. But I, uh, I, I, yeah, I have to tell you how much I love Lynn, but I didn't, so I won't. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, so anyway, what's happening? What's happening in the news? There's nothing much happening in the news except uh, there are a couple of. Uh, 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 first of all, go to Doctor Doom. Go to go to. Oh yeah, we had a real bad day today. <laughs> we lost twenty five hundred and eighty people today. Wow! Going up. Wow, we had gone down below a thousand, hadn't we? Yeah. Yep. In fact, on Sunday we only had two hundred and fifteen. Yeah. And you know who's starting to get it more than anybody else? Kids from eighteen to twenty five. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we- and in a way, there was part of me that went, oh, that's terrible. And there was part of me that went, good. Because those little assholes are the ones that were passing it to the rest of us. You know, they thought they were invincible and now they're not invincible. That's but right. it didn't say, if, uh, how about the deaths? Are they in that age group too? I don't know. They don't give the statistics. I get that from Johns Hopkins. You know. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have it by age. Age group. They say that that uh, seniors are not dying from it anymore. That they're they've all been vaccinated. They've been vaccinated. Exactly. You know. And uh, today, you know, this thing I got this little tchotchke I have on my phone, uh, where it uh, where it gives the uh, you know where I have my thing there. That's my things there. Yeah, that's, that's my. Small. I'll show you guys too. Uh, it did expire a month from when I signed up. It was supposed to expire on the uh, 26th of, uh, of April. Well, now I went back in and I hit a thing that said get an, a pass. So I went back and got a new pass. All right. And a second pass appears on here. And it's for, um, let's see here, what's eight? <coughs> uh, 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 August, August 28th. So oh. it's about, uh, it, it, what it is, is it's at the six-month mark from when I had my shot. And I think that's because uh, they're saying that it's good for at least six months now, the shot. Now, they may upgrade this when they make their next statement, say, hey, we're, we're finding out now that people are it's, uh, it's protecting them for longer than that. Right. So, you know, mm. we'll see what but happens. Now they're starting to sell uh, counterfeit COVID cards for 40 bucks. Are they really? That's what I figured would happen. That's why this is so good because this goes into the databases at the counties and cities mm. and so on and and says, okay, we see you had your shot. This is much better than, a, than the cards because what, you know, you just buy one of those cards and then fill it out. Yes, uh, so, Alan. So the, F, the FBI announced that they're going to go after people for counterfeiting a federal document, but that's not. A, well. It's not a federal document, is it? Yeah, it is. It's put out. It's put out by the CDC. It's it's an official CDC oh, card. Oh, okay, all right. According to them, I don't know. Well, you see, all they have to do, they don't even have to forge it. What they can do is they can like find some of these cards, a whole bunch of these cards that are haven't been filled out, and just sell them, and then you fill them out yourself. They yeah, can. they can do that too. Yeah, but I think I think it's. I think it's because it says Centers for Disease Control on it, it becomes a federally protected something. I don't know. Wow. It's just what I heard on the news. Wow. So that's that's I, I, how they're going to find these people unless they advertise on the internet. I don't know. Well, uh, you know, I uh, um, uh, I I think, but it it, uh, it the whole COVID thing is like up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, we New had, York is a hot spot right now. Well, they say them. it's a hot spot, but it's not. It doesn't look like a hot spot. I look at like, for instance, here's here's the latest statistics from our governor, uh, just sent by tonight. He's believable. Uh, yeah, he's believable. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he says that uh, they had the hospitalizations dropped to four thousand five hundred twenty-six of the two thousand twenty-one six hundred and seventy-four. Uh, 221,674 tests reported yesterday. 3.25% were positive. That's pretty good. 
Well, here in the here in the Bay Area, we're at one point two percent positive. Yeah, it's gone down considerably in California. So fuck you. Uh, the seven day average positivity rate was three point four eight percent. There were nine hundred fifty patients in ICU today. Uh, 13 up from the previous day. Of them, 593 were intubated. Sadly, we lost 59 New Yorkers to the virus. It's a little more than yesterday. Okay. Mm. So, but it's been hovering right, you know, around 60 for the like the last couple of weeks. So, but hey, I had the shot. We don't know of anybody that's died from it who has had the shot who has died. No. Nope. Don't. In fact, do we know anybody? Has anybody gotten the COVID? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there've been some people that have my huh? my granddaughter. But has she had the shot? No. Oh no, no. no. We're talking about somebody so, who's yeah. had. We're talking about somebody who's had the shot. Yeah. Yeah, we we know people that have gotten the uh, COVID after getting vaccinated, and that's how we yeah. know that nobody's been di- yeah. nobody's died or even been hospitalized. Yeah. Well, I want to yeah, get these. The, it, the numbers are very low. The yeah. people that have been fully vaccinated that are actually coming down with COVID. Well, I think people find this a boring discussion on the mo- for the most part uh, because the number just went down. Mm. It was up around 48. Now it's down to 42. So let's talk about something they always like. Sex. Matt Gates. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that... It- his friend's in big trouble, right? His friend who's in jail right now, he's supposed to testify tomorrow or something. They don't know if he's going to give him up or not. Is he in jail? Yeah, his buddy, right? The, the guy. Greenwood or whatever the guy's name is. Yeah. How did he wind up in, in jail? Uh, they, I guess he supposedly paid for a trip to Europe or something and then bought uh, hired hookers? Yeah, and I think he has more, too. I think there's... There's other items there too, but are you when, talking about the guy that was in charge of uh, the tax collector guy? No, the guy is a doctor. Oh, yeah, that like guy, a, the marijuana like guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a BFF of him. Yeah. 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 But I don't I, think he's in jail. He's just hiding low. Yeah. Well, Matt Gates, uh, I think uh, he tried to get a pardon from Trump, a yep. a, a a universal yeah. pardon. Yeah. yeah. In other words, for anything that somebody might charge him with. Now, unfortunately, I believe... Well, no, this is a federal uh, charge. This is a federal charge. So uh, so he could have given it to him, but he didn't. He didn't want to. At last, something Trump did right. <laughs> you know? They, uh, they offered him uh, 10 to 14 or 10 to 15 the other day, and he said, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> God, just, where on the internet did you see that joke? Uh, it was it was on Facebook. It was <laughs> they offered me <laughs> ten to fifteen. Sort of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, well, you know, the nice thing about it is, is that if he if he was somebody sixteen years of age, at least she could have gotten a COVID shot, and she would have been that would have been safe sex, I guess, something like that. I don't know about that. But, yeah, yeah, but. Uh, you know, I mean, um, this is the guy I think everybody's hoping, even even Republicans are hoping and praying they nail him. You know? Mm-hmm. He's just... Yeah, he's, he's odious. He's, he's, a, he's, yeah. just, he's a little termite. A, a weasel. Oh, yeah. 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 I have Republican friends that claim mm-hmm. he's innocent. The claim he's innocent? Well, not, I'm not going to say he's guilty. I, I never will say on this program that anybody's guilty until they go to court. I can they say can I hope he that. is. I hope he is, but I can't I say. It. So it, it is. It's that tax collector, Greenberg. Joel yeah, Greenberg. Greenberg yeah. yeah, he was making fake IDs with the congressman. Yeah. Oh, you mean fake IDs for COVID? <laughs> no, fake no, IDs no, for kids. the kids. Oh, wait a yeah. minute. Wait a minute. Fake IDs for the kids. Yeah, yeah, so they could say they were over 18. Oh, my right. boy. Holy shit. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. My question is, where are the parents? Yeah. You know, your daughter is getting on a plane and going to Florida to blow a congressman, a senator, <laughs> and you don't have anything to say about it as a parent? You yeah. probably thought it was a good thing. That's yeah, so probably. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what state they came from, the kids. Yeah, yeah. Florida. <laughs> Boy, it's, it, you know. 
mean, in Alabama, that's a class act if you could say, yeah, I was 14 and I had sex with a senator. <laughs> you get it to college because of that. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll I think see. it's sick. I think it's sick that yeah. this guy's going to maybe get away with it. I think it's gross having sex with little kids like that. Well, I, no, I, supposedly the girl was 17. You could say little kid, but really she's beyond little kid. Okay. 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 You know. And well, probably, you know, they said they met these girls on Sugar Daddy, Sugar Daddy websites. Yeah, yeah. SugarDaddy.com is that it? <laughs> yeah. GoDaddy.com. Sure no, no, I know. I'm on not Sugar Daddy. <laughs> no, I'm 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 running <laughs> running the show off of Go. My website is on GoDaddy. Okay. So, so please. So can't speak bad. Don't don't speak bad about GoDaddy. No, 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 no. not good. Uh, GoDaddy has nothing to do with SugarDaddy.com. Yeah, I think I think this is he a con congressman or a senator? He's congressman. congressman. The congressman. Gates. A wait a minute. Isn't Gates? A wait a minute. Isn't Gates a senator? No, he's no, congressman. 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 Oh, right. Okay. You said senator. I think he's got a bumper he's sticker on his car that says, "You've been a bad girl. Now go to my room." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's he's from the Panhandle of Florida. He's oh, okay, kind of all right. Now, there's a lot of Republicans in the Jacksonville area. Well, yeah, but are they gonna are they gonna vote for him again? Is the question. I don't know. Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Even if he's in jail, they'll probably. Knowing vote. Florida, probably. The, the probably is a pretty good bet in Florida. Yeah, bet. Yeah. Well, hey, Duncan Hunter got reelected. He's in California, but. Yeah. Well, you know, I felt sorry for though way back when, were all those uh, teachers who were having sex with their students, the female yeah. teachers that were having yeah. sex with their students, because they were hot, <laughs> and not the students, the teachers. Yeah, the teachers, yeah. Right. I mean, if I had a teacher like that when I was a kid, and she wanted to have sex with me at like fifteen. Hell, I'd be there in a in a in a minute, right? I, and the I, only I, danger, I, I the do. only danger to a kid in having sex with a woman like that, you know, they say, oh well, you know, it really will affect him for the rest of his life. Bullshit. You know, the only well, thing, he, the only the only harm that's going to happen to him is how chafed his hands are going to get from doing all those high fives with his <laughs> classmates. Right, right. Who turned him in? Was it his friends? Yes, because they were jealous. Jealous, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there was this one teacher. I can't remember which one she was. There were a couple of them, and they were all drop dead gorgeous. Yeah. That must be that must be difficult. When I went to when I went to grade school and I was fifteen, we had some of the ugliest teachers in the world. Oh yeah, all men yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Hey, we had all nuns, so I oh, well, <laughs> oops, you know. Yeah, so there was no chance. <laughs> By the way, we always heard about priests. Uh, uh, you know, diddling young boys, right? Yeah. Did the, any nuns diddle young boys? Probably. Uh, they used to beat the shit out of you, though. <laughs> yeah, they loved to beat on us, yeah. Did you go to well, Catholic school, now. too, uh, John? When I was really young, yeah. Um, like, from <laughs> first, second, and third grade. But then I got kicked out. <laughs> But I mean, uh, 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 but I mean, you always heard about you've heard about priests who have you know, obviously, been nasty and done the nasty deed, but you don't hear about this with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, um, nuns. nuns. Oh, the nuns would fool around with the priests. I think. You think that was that, it? That was our rumors. I there. had a. I tell you, years ago, I was doing a show in in San Francisco. Um, well, in Marin County, in which I was the announcer on the Rosary Hour. Uh, and what it was is the Rosary Hour did their show from different radio stations and did kind of all around the Bay Area uh, so they could use different priests and things like that, right? So the Rosary Hour comes to KTIM in San Rafael and it's, Alex, you're going to be the announcer on the Rosary Hour. And my mother, of course, always loved to listen to me when I was on the radio. And as a good Jewish mother, she was there every time I was doing a show, right? 
And as soon as I did the opening on this show, they had to stick a put a stick in her mouth to keep her from swallowing her tongue. Because I said this I remember it to this day. This is the Rosary Hour, brought by brought to you by the San Francisco Archdiocese. Join us now as we reflect in the life of our Lord and his most blessed mother. <laughs> and my mother started just swallowing her tongue. I mean, she went epileptic. I'd come home and she'd go, how could you do that? You know. <laughs> then I'd go, well, Mom, I'm Jewish, and they paid me for it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know? How did you not do it? <laughs> Got, and then it was okay. But anyway, I, they, I had a priest there one day say to me, uh, uh, you know, there was this one nun that was on the show, and she wasn't bad looking. She was, you know, I, I figured if you took the habit off and all of that, she'd probably be at least somewhat hot. And and the priest said to me, you know, see her? Huh? I did her. I did her. <laughs> you know, there were rumors that they had yeah. underground tunnels from the convent to the uh, rectory. You know, priests lived in a rectory, and the nuns lived in the convent. I heard it. I, I heard it. I heard that it went from the convent to the rectum. Is what I heard. <laughs> uh, but no, I just you know. Um, um, what? Nothing. That was good. That yeah. Was good. Yeah. I went twelve years Catholic school. <clears throat> high school. <throat> high school was an all boys school. We had nothing but priests. But the sad thing is, after I graduated years later, three priests. That I had as teachers got in trouble. <laughs> really? Which is, which is one of them. I went overnight, but we uh, we did a we were at a bicycle club and we biked and went camping overnight in a mm -hmm. cabin and came back. And I must not have been attractive enough or something. Well, I, but, I yeah, the, I would have felt terrible if I hadn't been at least approached by a priest. Yeah, because like, well, well, I'm not good enough, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, apparently I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you ever, did you know what was going on, though? No, no. I never heard about anything. Did you know what was later. going on, Scott? Well, we, we had a priest supposedly that went on a sabbatical um, for a while and then came back, and, and no one knew why. And then we found out years later that was why. But once again, they brought him back and didn't say anything. Well, they covered it up. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, what they yeah, were so yeah. that's what people found they were so guilty of was covering it up. Yeah. Not only priests, though. I had the Boy Scout leader would yeah. go on these campouts, and he yeah. would stay in a trailer. We'd all be in tents, and a couple of the kids would go into the trailer to do whatever with him. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, he got arrested, and here we are, a bunch of kids testifying against him in court. Well, actually, I was a camp counselor for the YWCA. Okay. That sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you have stories. No, I don't have any stories. No. Except one night we all got we all got drunk or something and for breakfast we had a whole bunch of eggs there to make them for breakfast and we started finding out how much fun it was to take slingshots, put them in the eggs, put the eggs in them and shoot them at trees. So that by the time the sun came up the next morning, there were like four eggs left. <laughs> Pre omelet. And so huh? we announced to all these campers that we were going to have a camper's breakfast, and the camper's breakfast was water and eggs. <laughs> With a little bit of tree bark. Yeah, but it was nothing but girls. But we didn't we didn't fool around with them at all. And at least I didn't. I don't think any of my guys who worked at were either, but I had to become a member of the YWCA in order to be a camp counselor. So I was a card carrying member of the YWCA. <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, was anybody here ever a camp counselor? Ah, yeah. So you know about abusing the campers, right? <laughs> well, it, it was for the, the high school that I attended had a campground in the summer that I worked at. Yeah. <laughs> And I learned a lot of things. I mean, first time drinking Heineken was, <laughs> was there. There was a guy from Holland. And, you know, the kids would leave on Saturday. Mm -hmm. New kids would come on Sunday afternoon. So you had all Saturday evening and, you know, the morning to do whatever you want. And that's, I was a sophomore in high school. 
and I learned how to party that summer. They did a lot of that. Yeah, well, I and beer drinking. Yeah, I, I, um, um, I just, you know, I, I found it interesting uh, doing that because I was the most <clears throat> non-outdoors person you ever met. So to make me a camp counselor is almost hilarious, and add to that that it was for the YWCA. <laughs> you know, I have a sad story, a funny sad story. Okay, funny when sad story. I was like sixteen. Time. I went to a camp. In the mountains in California, it was mm-hmm. snowing, mm-hmm. and there was a couple hot tubs there. And so, uh, Wait a minute, most you went camping were... and it was snowing. <laughs> yes. Who well, goes we to were... Who goes to camp when no, it's no, no, snowing? No. We were We were in a cabin, staying in a cabin, but there was a hot tub, and a bunch of us would go out there into the hot tub. Mm-hmm. And so it was big. It was like you know, mm-hmm. like most people's swimming pool, I guess. Mm-hmm. But we ran out of beer. I mean, we had these bottles of Budweiser up there. Of course, you know, having glass in a pool, they mix well. But when you're 16 and drunk, who cares? So a couple of us refilled the beer bottles with piss no. and put them in oh. the ice. <laughs> put them in the ice, and the camp counselors found them. And the next morning, everything was drank dry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a funny Oops. story that happened to me today. See this? This is a bottle of my sparkling water that I drink. It flavors like urine. Sp- from Costco. It. Well, there's a lime version that I don't use on the air because when I use it, the bottle disappears as I'm drinking yeah. it, okay, because of the, the green screen, all right? Wow. Well, today I go and I want to get some Windex to clean something. And I see a bottle of this next to the Windex, and it's got some of the lime stuff in it. And I figured, when did I leave it there? Oh, no. And I open it up, and I don't drink it, but I open it up and I, I smell it. And it's it's Ajax, like a Mr. Clean uh, liquid or something, the <laughs> oh, green no. liquid. It looks just oh, like no. the lime. I've got to talk to our cleaning woman. Don't use these bottles and fill them with green solution, okay? You almost poisoned me. Really? Wow. Well, yeah. Are you sure it wasn't Marjorie? No, that was what I was matter. thinking. Well, well she I'm didn't. Just saying. If it is, she didn't admit to it, okay? All right. <laughs> you asked her. Okay. So. Sorry if you're watching Marjorie. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. So. Several of us thought it might be Marjorie. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I never thought it was my Hey, life. listen, we've been through this COVID thing together, and we've been stuck in this house for a year, okay? And we yet, we have not come close to killing each other, all right? That's a good not marriage a, so far. A, how about a little bit? Huh? A little bit you killed her. Yeah, no. yeah just a little bit. I mean, little she's emotional got, kill. She's gotten mad oh, enough. God, yeah. She's gotten mad a couple of times, and I've gotten mad a couple of times. You know, <clears> I mean, it's got to happen. You're stuck in the house. Really uh, now, I'm 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 jealous of like Kevin because Kevin, you live in California. You've got a car, so you could go out and not have to worry about catching COVID by driving your car around, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so you and your wife haven't had to have this closeness that some people No, have. she goes to work every day, too. Yeah. And so Marjorie's working at home, and, I mean, it was just, we, we were literally stuck here with each other for a year. And we were just amazed we didn't try to kill each other. And that the arguments were, we had them, but they weren't often, you know. Uh, you know, I know she's mad at me when she resorts to saying, fuck you. You know, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good sign. Yeah, that's a good sign. That's a well. That that's a that's a good chance she's mad at you. You know, and and you and uh, you and your wife uh, uh, Jeff uh, haven't had any problems, right, Pam? No, nothing. No, we're, we're never, never. Yep. <laughs> uh, come on. <laughs> You're gonna tell uh, you're gonna tell I mean, me that in a I whole mean, year. What we know about Pam. She's the perfect wife. Right. Well, Pam's a great yeah. lady, you know, <laughs> but I can't see how they went a year without at one uh, time. We we probably tried to kill each other every week. Yeah, it, it yeah. was. It's tough to uh, just be in the same house, and we never went anywhere. That was the other yeah. thing. Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got a big place here, so she could go into one room and I could go into another. Yeah. And we w didn't have to put up with each other for a day. But if this were back in my old apartment that was a one-bedroom, one of us would be dead by now, <laughs> you know. Either either from trying to kill each other or just saying, fuck it, I'm going outdoors without a mask. Life isn't worth living, you know. But... Uh, uh, anyway, and, 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 and in your travels, Trucker Steve, in your travels, do you see a lot of masks or do you not see a lot of masks? Um, half and half, it's starting to look Hmm? You okay, okay, less yeah. and less. Less, less and less. Masks. People are getting a little, little, uh, chancy oh, now. Oh. They, they, yeah, they're getting bold because they think, ah, oh, you know. I mean, I wear the mask all the time, and I have got the COVID shot. I went to the doctor today, and I said, uh, we were talking, and I said, yeah, I have, I've had my, we both had the mask on, and we both agreed that we both had the COVID shots, but we weren't taking our masks off, you know? We, it, it, even though the chances, if I took the mask off and tongue kissed the guy, I probably wouldn't get anything, right? <laughs> but the point, well... I'd probably get some yeah. of it. Uh, that yeah. vegetable is pretty gross. Uh, but but no. But the point I'm making is is that we wouldn't. It wouldn't be that terrible. Uh, but nevertheless, we you still do it. Yourself. We still do it. We we were going to go shake hands, and then we they said no, we don't shake hands yeah. yet. You know, and it, yeah. But <laughs> but and, and chances are, I mean, if I went around without a mask all day, I'm probably not going to get COVID. But, you know, it's my respect for other people. And we don't know that I can't get any symptomatic. That's the other thing we don't know. So here um, we are, back to talking about... Also, the, the, the mutations, they're not sure if, yeah. the, if the vaccine in real world... In the labs, the vaccine are, is fine. But in real world, where you've got millions and millions of people, yeah. that can change. Yeah. So. I would I would continue to wear the mask even if you're around vaccinated people. You, you've had both shots, right, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. And, and my wife just got her uh, J and J last night, yesterday. Really? So she's just one <laughs> shot, and that's she's good, good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my question is, but but you're still going to wear a mask outside, right? Oh uh, yeah. 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 Where I need to, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're in a car and you're driving around, you don't need to. But the minute you get out of the car, you put on the mask, you know. Yeah. So some guy came by, our next-door neighbor who works at a hospital here in New York, came by and dropped off for Marjorie and I each a, a double-layered mask, uh -huh. okay? And mm -hmm. I thought, that's pretty cool. I don't have to double up. It's a double-layer mask, but it's a little harder to wear because, you know, it doesn't breathe as easily. But I put it on, and the ear strap broke. Yeah, <laughs> right, out, right off the bat. Wow. And I don't have the... I, I'm not going to go knock on this. Do you have any more? <laughs> your, your first one you gave me broke. Hmm. You know. Well, you would have thought that in this time of COVID and the last year, that some company would have come out with a new and improved mask. Something that was like really cool. Well, no, you you you're, you're going to pull something out, and I don't care what you say. I, oh, it, that will well, I am. Dude, well, there that, you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you see that one that will I am dude put out? No. Oh, uh, oh yeah, it's got this you know full mask. It's got the earphones. It's got communication on it. It's like three hundred bucks. Really? <laughs> wow. oh, yeah. And the strap still breaks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Wow. That's it's got, you know, Bluetooth headphones in it and all that shit. Really? I have my, yeah, I have, well, I, I had it back here. You, you can't see it. It's on the other side of New York City. Uh, I have a, a um, one of those masks that they used to wear during the Black Death, you know, with the big beak huh. on it. Yeah, my daughter has one. Yeah, the beaks were used uh, because it, in it they put in something like a couple of different things like cloves or whatever that were supposed to protect you from the plague. And uh, they, they wore those. <clears throat> uh, but uh, I thought like that, I, well, I think that's a very cool look, you know.
but I can't wear yeah, that. You can get them on Amazon. She got it for her Halloween costume. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah, the one I have lights up and does things like that. But, you know, it doesn't count as a mask, I don't think. So, yeah. Now, you're where again, uh, um, uh, Scott? Well, I'm in Ohio. You're in Ohio. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it, it, things going pretty cool there. I mean, is it cooling down in Ohio? Somewhat. The uh, cases are younger now, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're attributing it literally to sports. Yeah, yeah they, I was that, seeing that tonight. Sports is what yeah. they're attributing it to. You yeah. know, I just think that we shouldn't open up anything till at least eighty percent of the public has been vaccinated. You know, well, that so-called herd immunity. Because until then, I don't think it's it's safe to even send people to kids to school. We thought kids couldn't get it. We thought kids were kind of immune to it. And they're dying not, of it. I think Brian, wasn't on um, Brian Gumble also. They were showing the sports, and they were showing how kids are getting it, and all these other coaches don't care because they're saying this is their window of opportunity to make it yeah. in sports, and oh, yeah. so their parents are paying them to do football and stuff like that. <clears throat> so there's so there's other possibilities that other than just being in sports. The new most active variant in the United States is the UK one now, mm -hmm. and so maybe that mutation is gets kids quicker than it gets adults this is a few this is a few weeks ago that they're talking about probably like three or four weeks ago oh on mm -hmm. brian gumble yeah and they were showing cases from the previous months yeah, yeah. well i mean this is fairly new so here we go we always you know no matter what happens on the show somehow we always get back <laughs> Better than talking to, about uh, you know who the virus it, it, what? number 45 yeah better we're than not talking, talking about, about who you know who we When are. do you know who? You mean Trump? The orange dude. Yeah. Orange yeah. What's to talk about? That's he's, good. I, he's, That's yeah. he's, I've got the point. He's neutralized. I know he, he's been appearing some places. He was on Newsmax, but he, he you didn't see him. It was just a phone call. And he's, you know, he still thinks he's president of the United States. You know, he's doing uh, uh, info ads for Taco Bell. I think is he really? Uh, I think he. I no. think. Uh, well, what, he, what's all the fast food? Well, as I, uh, from what I saw, he's available for weddings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They yeah, need another it, portable it, toilet or what? Well, you no, have to. He's all... going to give the speech. He's going to give that speech. That he's only going to talk about is how he got robbed from the election oh, again yeah. for an hour. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and Pence is Pence is going to come out with a book. That ought to be a good one. Yeah. Oh, uh, are you serious? Mm, yeah. How I hid in the Capitol. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. That's right. How I shit my pants in the Capitol. <laughs> oh yeah. If he was on the show, he would say yes. He shit his pants. Yeah. Oh, he would say I was running up the Capitol building. Yeah. I, I heard. I heard today that they're they're offering him a million dollars for that book, Kevin. Seven figures. You know. Oh, yeah. Wow. 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 But they can't. They don't know if they're oh, going to hey. get anybody to talk. <laughs> I, just, I just looked. I got to start the theme. There we go. Oh. We were having such a nice time, you know. And uh, uh, sorry, I was late. Oh, that's okay. Do you have a note? Uh, <laughs> I'll have one tomorrow for you. <laughs> Jeff, always good to have you here. And of course, Brian, great to have you here. And Charlie Wallace, great to have you here. And Rocky and Bullwinkle there. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, Which one's Rocky? Trucker Steve and, and Rocky, who's his dog. Oh. Look at that. Look at that cute dog. Yeah. And, and Jeff, good to have you here tonight, always as usual. And uh, Scott, nice to have you. Second night in a row, you're almost a regular. I'll try tomorrow, you're, too. You're good. almost a regular. Like Kevin, always, always a pleasure. You know that. And Alec, uh, Alan, Alex, Alan, thank you. I'm Alex. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, all of you, uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just unceremoniously hang up on them and let you know that the next show here is yeah, The Intersection with Jack Bishop. He'll be here with uh, using Skype, and you just call GabNet Live on Skype, and you can be part of that uh, little gathering. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night, uh, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there 
and do your fellow citizen a favor. Even if you've been vaccinated, wear a mask until you're told the coast is clear. <laughs>